What's your name and badge number? What's your name and badge number? I asked you a question. Hey guys, I do have a Monday editorial for you. That's right, it's Mad Monday. Are you guys ready for the week? Are you ready? <clears throat> I hope everybody had a great Mother's Day. I did with wifey and my mom. We took mama out for lunch and uh, had a great, great meal at Billy J's in Fontana. It was a perfect meal I had. Uh, what did I have? The um, Santa Fe Melt Sandwich with Avocado. So, uh, oh, and... and um, before I even get to that, so I did a video um, this week in a cop watch where a security guard chased a guy through town. Apparently the guy is going to sue the security guard for uh, <clears throat> whatever happened in that interaction. But he also said he was going to press charges against me for f putting his face on the internet of him and his family. Here's the thing I want to let you guys know. There is no expectation of privacy in public. When you're out in public, just expect people are filming you. Even if they're not, just expect it. Because in today's social media age, in today's social media, uh, I don't know, uh, temperature, people are going to film anything and everything. People are doing video blogs. People are doing cop watching. People are just, they got their phones going, the cameras going. You're on film. You're on camera, whatever. Okay, just, just consider that. I mean, you walk into a bank, there's cameras on you. You walk into a business, a store, any, you, how many of you go to stores and go shopping? There's cameras on you. Okay? Uh, even now, when you walk downtown, do you know that cities are now putting cameras in street lights so that they can see the streets? So if there's a crime, the cops can go back and pull that and see what happened. Uh, bars and businesses have what's called street cameras on the door, but they can see the sidewalk and they can see the street. <clears throat> You're on camera, guys. It's part of America now, and it's melding and meshing into the point where everybody is a journalist now. Anybody can be a journalist, and you can call yourself a freelance journalist. That's our story this morning going, coming out of San Francisco a freelance journalist that was just trying to do a story, that was just trying to exercise his rights under the First Amendment of the U.S. Constitution, but he may have committed a crime. Now, I'm going to put a link to the full story in the description box below, and I'm also going to put a link to a, uh, a lawyer's website where he talks about Penal Code 503. Now, Penal Code 503 deals with embezzlement. And uh, this story here, I mean, we want to side with a journalist, and I kind of do side with a journalist. I'm kind of like, uh, yeah, I think the cops effed up here. But if this journalist committed a crime, i.e. if he violated Penal Code 503, look, you know what? I mean, you butter your bread, you got to eat it. You make your bed, you got to sleep in it. I, it's uh, That's why I say... You know, I try hard not to violate penal codes and not to violate laws and statutes. And a lot of times that's why people, some people have gotten upset with me about not going into post offices or going into a police station, just staying out on the sidewalk. And I think maybe I do play it a little too careful sometimes, but that's why. Because I don't want to commit a crime or break the law in a fashion where it puts me in a vulnerable position to be arrested and I have no leg to stand on. I want to ask you guys to comment in the comment section below if you think this journalist has a leg to stand on when we get done with this story. <coughs> yeah, I'm still battling a cold. <coughs> and you guys are going to have to deal with it. Nanny nanny boo boo. Uh, going to San Francisco, a San Francisco journalist said Sunday authorities knocked down the gate of his home with a sledgehammer, handcuffed him for hours and seized thousands of dollars in electronics after he refused to identify a confidential source. Now, there is something that says, um, I think it mentions it in here as we go through this, 
but that journalists do not have to um, identify their sources or release the name of their sources when they're doing a story. Like, you don't have to tell the police, this is my source. It's confidential and that's your private information. Uh, but this is a freelancer, so we'll see what happens here. And again, remember, mainstream media, freelancers. No, there's no difference in America. The First Amendment gives us the right to free press. We're journalists. We have the First Amendment right. But the police don't see it that way. They see mainstream media and they see freelancers. PIOs in police agencies. They see means, oh, you're with uh, ABC Eyewitness 7. Yeah, let me give you the uh, media release. Uh, oh, who are you? I'm Joe. I'm a freelancer. Oh, yeah, bye. So that's just how they see it um, that I've learned. But the journalist Brian Carmody said in an interview that the raid occurred Friday. Though officers from the San Francisco Police Department first asked him two weeks ago about who provided a police report that revealed details of the death of the city's longtime public defender, Jeff Adachi, in February. The city's medical examiner determined that trace amounts of cocaine and alcohol found in Adachi's system contributed to a heart attack that killed him. Carmody, a 49-year-old freelancer, said he sold the leaked story, which included photos from the apartment where Adachi was found unresponsive, to some local news outlets. After the leak was denounced by elected officials and Adachi's widow, who called it despicable, a department commander apologized and said he, the leaker would be held accountable. See, already, the match is lit. Right there, the match was lit. When the officers arrived at Carmody's home, he said they asked me to give them the source. Of course I declined. When authorities returned on Friday, Carmody said officers had a warrant that appeared to say they were looking for the report, which was described as stolen or embezzled property. And that's the question here and there, therein that lies. How did he get the police report? Was it a stolen police report? Was it embezzled? I, you know, and that it was given to him um, in trust that he wouldn't release it, and then here he released all the information. It's, it's something to ask yourself. Did this freelance journalist break the law? Uh, did he commit embezzlement? Uh, did he have own stolen property? Was he allowed to, was the person allowed to have that police report? Carmody said he was handcuffed for seven hours while officers took his equipment and obtained another warrant to search his office. They took every electronic device that I own, every computer, every hard drive, every digital photograph that I've taken in the last 25 years, Carmody said. They also took the report, though Carmody said the documents did not specify the source who provided it to him. The San Francisco Police Department did not immediately respond to a request for comment, but it provided a statement Friday to NBC Bay Area. It said today's actions are one step in the process of investigating a potential case of obstruction of justice, along with an illegal distribution of a confidential police report. The local chapter of the Society of Professional Journalists condemned the raid, saying it shows an alarming disregard for the right to gather and report on information. The group said it was seeking more information on why the department did not follow California's shield laws, that's what I was talking about earlier, which protects journalists who refuse to disclose a source's identity. California has shield laws for the journalists. Carmody said he's had a good working relationship with the police department for years. Now he just wants his equipment back. He said, at this point, they've shut down my business completely. I don't have the gear I need to do my job. And so here we have it. The question remains, though, was this police report FOIAable? I know some of you say, yeah, you can FOIA anything. You really can't FOIA anything. I mean, there are certain things that you can't FOIA request. Uh, there are certain things that are, are, I guess, held confidential or they're part of an investigation. Remember, this this uh, public defender just died in February. They were probably still conducting the investigation. Uh, so there's certain things that just can't be released yet. You'll hear that. Sometimes you hear police say, we can't release that information at this time. It's an ongoing investigation or this, this, that. So maybe the, the report was stolen and handed to this freelancer who just boom, put everything out there with the news outlets and uh, busted up their investigation. There's a lot of questions here. If you guys find out more stuff, you're free to put it in the comment section below, but they're kind of being shady on this. I don't know. The match was lit, though. This guy will be held accountable. I want to know what you guys think in the comment section below. Happy Monday, and remember, 
always, always, always record the police. Thank you.